So hello everyone, good morning and welcome to our HCC Paris webinar. So thank you for being connected with us today for our live session on trust and new venture financing presented by our professor Etienne Krieger. So my name is Suzanne Materne. I'm the program advisor for our master in innovation and entrepreneurship. And we are speaking live from our Jouy en Josa campus next to Paris. So good morning, Etienne. How good are morning. you doing? Good morning, Suzanne. I'm fine, fine. And you? Well, I'm doing quite well, thanks. So I'm really happy to do this webinar with you and to discover this sample class about venture financing. So. Etienne, you are our professor for our course on entrepreneurial finance, which is one of the most popular courses of our master in, in innovation and entrepreneurship, almost as popular as you as a professor. Oh, <laughs> yeah. good to know. Thanks, Suzanne. <laughs> so, <laughs> I've made my day. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> so Etienne, maybe could you tell us uh, in a few words about your course about entrepreneurial finance, please? Well, uh, with entrepreneurial finance, we, we address all the issues, the human issues of equity, uh, allocation, of uh, financing growth, of ambition, of positioning, of business modeling, of profit equation. So uh, it's, it's, uh, it's the financial translation of all the rest. And I'm addressing uh, that, uh, helping people uh, putting their business plan into figures and, and seeing if it's current. So I'm addressing issues of finance growth strategies, financial modeling, financial engineering, exit issues, and things like that. But you will see that in my course if you attend to these uh, muscles. Okay. okay, thank you so much again. So just to give you a few lines for this presentation, first of all, I will give you a few facts and figures about our business school, HEC, and a few words about our Master in Innovation and Entrepreneurship. And next will be what you'll be waiting for, which is Etienne Krieger's presentation on trust and new venture financing. So during the whole presentation, you can take your keyboard and send us questions. And at the end of uh, Etienne's presentation, or Etienne and I maybe, we will be answering your questions and hopefully all your questions. So after Etienne's presentations, I will conclude in a few words to explain to you how you can apply for a master and maybe how you can get a taste for it of it for free. So please stay connected till the end. So just before starting my presentation, I really would love you viewers who are all around the planet looking at us, if you could jump on your keyboards and maybe answer this poll, because we would like to know, well, why are you here? Maybe you're considering to apply for a Master in Innovation and Entrepreneurship. Well, thank you so much. Maybe you also want to scale a company or an activity that's already existing or you want to launch your own business, so fi venture financing is a critical issue for you, or you maybe just have a general interest in the topic, or well, you're maybe just curious, or you could be several of those uh, different answers. So we'll wait for a few seconds until you're, well, thank you for your responses. I can see there are quite a few responses. Okay, only, yeah, 70% of you have voted. A few more seconds, maybe we'll get to, well, yeah, 74, 76 percent of you have voted and well a big majority of you want to launch your own business and are also considering to apply to our MSc. Okay well thank you I think we can go to the next slide. So a few facts and figures about our business school HEC Paris. Well it was founded in 1881. It is said to be the second business school in Europe and of course the first in France. We are ranked top 32 for graduating, uh, graduating CEOs of Fortune 500. We have 45 diplomas and degrees uh, that are available and um, proposed by HCC all on our website. And for all the entrepreneurs who are watching us, the, you may be interested to know that we are the first entrepreneurship school in Paris with a very strong link with the world's latest, uh, largest incubator, which is Station F in the uh, heart of Paris. So another very important part in our business school, a very uh, powerful tool and network is our alumni network. There are 60,000 alumni part of our network. It is ranked number one in 2019 by The Economist as the most powerful business school alumni network. We have over 100 nationalities uh, covered, which may interest all our international viewers, and more than 1,000 events are organized every year around the planet by our alumni network. So now back to our master in innovation and entrepreneurship. A few facts uh, about it. Well, it is 
100% online and in English, hosted by the platform, uh, course, uh, our partner Coursera on their platform. So uh, online means that you do not have to travel through our campus. Of course, if you want to visit a campus, you're most welcome, but it's absolutely not an obligation. You, work, you can work from home, you can work from your office, you can work even from an airport when you're waiting for a flight. The, the duration of the course is 18 months. There are 20 courses on the whole. The first 10 are the fundamental courses, which are pre-recorded courses. And during the second part, the 12 months, you work in a team of four or five peers on a project base. And I'll be developing that point uh, later on. So, so that's something really important. And during that second phase of our masters, the courses are live webinars like we're doing now. So, so it can, Tell me a little bit more about these courses that you do through the webinars. How do, how do you feel it? How is the interaction with the students in there compared to an uh, on-campus uh, course? It's, uh, it's different, but it, uh, it can be uh, very interactive also because uh, people can react, can ask questions, and, uh, and then uh, it's, it's followed by WhatsApp groups. And, uh, and, uh, and again, uh, we, uh, we achieve to digitalize everything uh, in these uh, masters, everything except the graduation ceremony, which would have been a big mistake because people love go on the campus, uh, have a lunch at the chateau, and uh, come with their parents parents and with their kids uh, sometimes, but, but again, uh, with uh, digitalization, it's very flexible and you can ask a lot of questions and then we can uh, also uh, go in direct mode uh, through complementary sessions like uh, um, uh, afternoon uh, online uh, sessions uh, uh, devoted to entrepreneurship where we can interact uh, directly through WhatsApp or uh, through, through the mail. So it's quite interactive and uh, it depends on, uh, on the will you have to, uh, to talk uh, to, your, to, your, uh, to your classmates and to your friends. Okay, well, that's, that's super interesting. Okay. So our, uh, we have two, uh, um, two intakes that are coming up for our MSIE. So the next one, uh, the courses are starting in December 16. So that leaves you still lots of time to to start an application, complete your application, and submit an application for our jury. And we are also already accepting candidates for our June 2020 cohort too. We have so intakes every six months. So we were talking previously about the second part of our masters, which are the project-based courses. So you work on a real case, an entrepreneurial venture, which may be yours that you have pitched uh, you know, the, at the cohort and uh, well, your students, uh, your um, mates have uh, voted for you, or it can be your classmates' entrepreneurial the venture. So you work on a real case during those 12 months, those 10, 10 courses. Recently, I had someone who said, well, oh, an online program, I'm afraid to being alone in front of my screen. But no, not for our MSIE, right from the beginning, right from the fundamental courses, all our students are interacting on forums, they are getting to know each other, sometimes even creating podcasts, there's a lot, a lot of interaction between our students. And some say, even some professors say that maybe there's more, more interaction than certain of the on-campus programs where finally the students are not interacting that much. And collaboration is happening, cooperation and learning between peers happen during those 18 months thanks to all the exchanges that is happening between the students. And that's really super interesting. And of course, the exchanges get much more intense once you start working in a team on a project and well, you are not alone. Why? Because you have learning coaches who are there to help you work on, to make sure that you're still following the program, that you're still uh, following our rhythm. You have professors who are coaching the dynamics of the groups. And we all, and so there's really this notion of a community that's being created by our students, a very special community of entrepreneurs, innovative people. And we also have a new academic advisor, which is Etienne. So Etienne, just a few words about that, your, your role. Yeah, uh, I have to say that uh, I, I really love these uh, online masters. I, I have been involved uh, at the, since the conception of this, this program, and we designed this program, of course, uh, high quality courses, but also an individual uh, follow-up and a red thread project uh, done by groups of uh, 
three to, to four persons uh, and uh, and during this uh, the, this uh, red thread project you you work on a real project a real new venture and you address all the issues again of business planning of positioning of uh, uh, risk analysis of uh, team building and uh, at the end you are pitching uh, this project in front of a jury and you get uh, oral and written feedbacks and uh, what I saw uh, last time was high quality pitches really uh, the probably the highest quality of what we get so uh, that that means that uh, it, it's uh, it, it's really uh, amazing what's happening uh, in terms of group dynamics and so you are presenting a video so it's a question of content and of, of, of quality on of enthusiasm and of course people afterwards are also uh, considering uh, uh, just executing this, uh, this this project and that's where HEC's resources at HEC alumni uh, uh, our also Paris Aquas Seed Fund our incubator located at, uh, at Station F uh, that's that, that's where you you can use all these resources but again uh, as an academic advisor I'm involved in animating uh, with uh, the MSIE team uh, all these group dynamics and uh, so we are creating conferences webinars like that uh, these office hours these startup office hours if you have to uh, uh, if you have issues on a, on a given project and so there are lots of resources and that's why I say it's like a it's like a, a, a Spanish restaurant you bring uh, what you uh, you get what you bring in terms of uh, involvement and enthusiasm and uh, HEC's network is powerful uh, just use it and, uh, and it works okay thank you thank you so much Chaitanya. yeah and you were talking about well the fact that the, everything is there to 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 launch a startup we even had two students during the courses who launched their startup so that was pretty amazing they didn't know each other they did, when they came into uh, the 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 msie they had no idea of launching a startup and during the courses themselves so that talks about the quality of the networking and the help that you get from HEC and of course the strong collaboration that exists between our students of the MS Masters in Innovation and Entrepreneurship. Okay, well, that's all for me. Now, Etienne, your time to talk. Yeah, thanks, Suzanne. Oh, trust. Uh, the, the difficulty will be to, uh, to, to, to do it uh, short because I devoted a lot of uh, a lot of time uh, on on this issue because I made a PhD. I lived for five years on on this issue, and you may consider why why trust and new venture creation and uh, and I try to 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 answer and uh, to to show you that uh, that trust is a uh, an important component. But first, let's start with uh, 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 a quick uh, quiz. Uh, so, uh, what is according to you the most important criterion for a venture capital investor? Investor. So these these people are the highest demanding uh, people. Uh, while uh, considering a startup, you will see that the selection rate is below one percent. So they are look, getting uh, uh, thousands of business plans every year. And what is, according to them, the most important criteria uh, while analyzing a business plan? Is it the size of and the, of the target market and its growth potential? Is it according to you the startup's IP, so the intellectual pro pro property and the, uh, the company's competitive advantage? Is it the quality and the trustworthiness of the founding team? Or is it according to you again the relevance and the coherence of the startup's business model? Okay, so 40% of you only have voted. So please, if you could all vote, just give an answer so that we, no. we get an idea. And obviously, well, it's the third answer the quality and trustworthiness of the founding team that seems to be like more than half of the votes yes so Etienne what is and your point of view on that that's exactly uh, the answer that's it does not mean that, of course, the company uh, that nobody cares about the business model, about the IP, about the target market. But as we will see, uh, team is is absolutely key. It is 75% uh, of the investment decision of the weighting of of the VCs, and uh, that's what we see, for instance, for the at the investment committee of the Paris Aquas Seed Fund, which is a seed and venture capital fund, a 53 million seed and venture capital fund created by HEC, Ecole Polytechnique, and other limited partners other uh, uh, stakeholders so team is key and that's why uh, at, at the end of the day trust appears as an issue for these uh, these people for these very demanding investors and uh, also for other kind of, of stakeholders so 
uh, a bit of theory. Why? Uh, why did I choose uh, the question of trust? Because uh, some people say uh, that calculation is everything. Uh, I was quite shocked uh, when I was younger uh, of uh, an article of Oliver Williamson, which is a very famous uh, professor, that said, uh, well. Uh, Let's stop with all this uh, literature about trust. Uh, calculativeness is determinative uh, and uh, trust uh, only applies or should only apply uh, in very special uh, private relationships between friends and lovers. But uh, trust only muddies the clear water of calculativeness. So, uh, so I, I was shocked and uh, well, then I tried to, uh, to design uh, uh, to design a research in order to prove that trust uh, was uh, was important. Uh, but again, there are some people who say uh, ma management, it's economics without maths, uh, it's soft skills, uh, calculation is everything, you should translate everything into Excel. I agree that uh, you can translate everything into Excel, but uh, can you live without trust? Uh, that was that was my uh, that was my research, my philosophical uh, research. And so uh, on the on the one side, if you look at uh, management or if you look at finance again, uh, th th there is a lot of things that uh, that that should be put into figures, uh, as we will see in my course. The profit equation: if if uh, if a business model is not uh, is not profitable and is not scalable, and if you cannot analyze and uh, carefully uh, uh, analyze the customer acquisition cost and the customer lifetime value and other kind of ratios, uh, it, it's it's not uh, it, it's very risky, and uh, probably investors will not invest. And so. At the end of the day, even a company's value is uh, the discounted value of its future cash flows. So what are the future cash, cash flows? What is the discount rate? And the risk is nothing else than the volatility than the standard deviation of return rates. Of course, uh, I'm not kidding. This is ab absolutely true, but uh, we'll see that uh, it's, it's not enough. But uh, uh, risk and return are, are everywhere. So the assessment of the, the risk and in the startup world, the risk is simply between losing everything and making a big gain. So uh, never forget uh, upside risk, which is uh, the risk of being very successful. And uh, financial guys uh, analyze uh, that even uh, through the sharp ratio, which is what is the marginal return per uh, marginal unit of risk taken. And if you get a higher marginal return, uh, you, you'll probably get a, a, a rich uh, trader. So, but this is all true, but it doesn't really apply in the startup world because you only get these figures exposed. And uh, at the beginning, uh, you, you, you cannot uh, measure, you do not know even about the cash flows, about the business model. But your issue as an entrepreneur is to share future cash flows, because at the beginning you are burning cash, and share future capital gains among uh, numerous uh, stakeholders, among founders, of course, uh, among investors, asset providers, managers, future employees, and of course, investors, friends and family, business angels, uh, seed and uh, venture capital funds, private equity funds, which we, you will see with my friend and colleague, uh, Patrick Leblanc. And so it's an issue of creating future future cash flows and uh, creating and, and sharing a pie. Uh, we'll have some uh, courses about uh, equity allocation and uh, how to share the, the pie. And you will see that it's, it's almost never a one man show or a one woman show. So, uh, so the, the, this issue of creating cash flows, future cash flows appears and that where, that's where trust uh, comes and creeps uh, in almost all these, uh, these issues. And if you look at the, at the figures uh, over 20 years in Europe, but uh, almost all over the world, venture capital is very risky. It's not very profitable. So people are dreaming or are hoping to be uh, more successful than uh, the average or than the mathematical expectation, which is uh, not to lose money, but not to make a lot of money. And so venture capital is not very profitable uh, and uh, development capital is a bit more profitable. So taking risk at the beginning is, is quite risky. Yeah. And the standard deviation, as we said, is between losing everything uh, and making a, a big gain. And it's also more a marathon uh, than a sprint because uh, the liquidity, uh, the time, the average time, the period to, to, to sell your shares is more than seven, uh, seven years. Uh, so uh, again, uh, that's the reality of uh, startups and SMEs. But 
it's of course not uh, only about figures. It's mainly uh, a people's business and uh, entrepreneurs are passionate. Sometimes knowing or ignoring that it's impossible helps them uh, making it come true. And so all these pictures, uh, as you know, Suzanne are uh, HEC alumni, entrepreneurs, famous ones, uh, uh, some of them uh, being currently incubated, uh, other ones have, having created and developed their company, having scaled them. I take some examples during my course about, uh, for instance, the founders of Big Mama. I love Big Mama. This is a company created uh, uh, five years ago. I know there are more than 1,000 employees and, uh, and, and they are passionate entrepreneurs and talented entrepreneurs. And so uh, that's, uh, that's where, of course, the issue of uh, attracting people, of finding complementary people in terms of uh, talent uh, and in, in, uh, in terms of integrity uh, appears. So let's go back to my research and the research itself, of course, I will not summarize. I will not defend my PhD as I did, but uh, the, the title had to be complicated as for a PhD. And it was about the respective influence of trust and instrumental approaches in evaluating new ventures. And I applied that to venture capital professionals. The question simply uh, saying was, is, is trust important and not only calculations? And uh, to test that, uh, let's look at VCs, uh, which are ne never daydreaming. They are hoping, but it's, it's, uh, it's highly data-driven. And so, again, uh, trust, uh, because there are lots of definitions, but if you trust uh, somebody, you are making uh, an assumption about this person's competence, ability to deliver, deliver what you expect, and also the nature of uh, the intentions, the integrity. Uh, Suzanne, you may trust me because you think that I'm competent in Excel, but I may, uh, I may perhaps not deliver because I have other issues. And so it's, it's, it's again, uh, and uh, uh, there, there is a, a technical, aspect and a moral aspect and that's why uh, what that's what uh, what makes uh, trust uh, complicated and uh, so it's uh, it's a strong psychological insurance without the security of insurance because if you can calculate it completely uh, there is no room no necessary room for trust so it's a leap of faith uh, and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, doing that that's why people uh, if, if uh, trust is misplaced feel betrayed and overreact. And that's, that's what makes the, this thing particularly interesting. And so there are lots of sayings, uh, there are lots of social structures that show that trust or perhaps distrust is everywhere. Uh, uh, in the Middle Ages, for instance, uh, in the castles, uh, the, the, the way uh, the castles were built, uh, if you were assaulted, uh, most people are right-handed, uh, so you, 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 could, uh, you had an advantage uh, over your enemy. Uh, you, uh, if, you, uh, if you drink with something, uh, if Suzanne, if you uh, expect that I have poisoned uh, your glass, uh, let's, uh, let's shock uh, glasses together because uh, uh, then uh, I, I may, may perhaps also die with the poison I put in your glass. And so there are lots of uh, social structures where people uh, trust or do not trust and reputation-based uh, structures, for instance, uh, uh, in, in the, the trading, in the business of diamonds trading, uh, my word is my bond. If I defect, I, I'm, I, I'm uh, blacklisted all over the world. And so you have so very interesting uh, uh, sayings uh, about uh, trust, uh, uh, people who, uh, who say, for instance, Leonardo da Vinci experience proves that one who never trusts uh, anyone will never be disappointed, but then uh, do you really live? And so uh, it's, uh, uh, it's really an, an issue that concerns uh, every people. Uh, so uh, we'll, uh, we'll send you the slides if you want, of course, and uh, you have even uh, sayings according to which, for instance, in Germany, Vertrauen is good, controller is better. So uh, uh, trust is good, but uh, controlling is, is better. And uh, so uh, again, uh, it's, difficult, uh, it's difficult to trust and uh, some people uh, prefer then controlling or uh, regulating than that through in uh, incentive uh, schemes. And that's all what management is, uh, is about. So if we go back uh, to venture capital investors, um, I'm uh, doing a course uh, on the campus uh, about startup financing. And uh, of course, uh, the, the main aspects of this course are also uh, used uh, in, uh, uh, in these masters. 
and an invite the management company, the venture capital uh, management company that is behind uh, the management of the Paris Success Seed Fund. And they have a plain and simple framework. Of course, there is a most detail, more detailed one. We'll share with you uh, more detailed ones, Excel files, uh, where you can uh, self-assess your project. But uh, as we saw uh, in the first quiz, uh, the main criteria is the team. And they say a venture capital investment uh, investor will never invest if he doesn't trust the team. So that's the major uh, aspect. The second major aspect is it must be a big market, uh, a market uh, above uh, one billion dollars, because it's 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 easier to to thrive on a on a big and growing market than on a small niche. Uh, of course, that's the venture capital model. There can be, can be other models. Uh, technology is important, but it's more an enabler. And if uh, if the company has to be sold, uh, you sell it for uh, not only uh, zero and traction. Even uh, if uh, if the company is in a seed stage, you have to prove yourself, and we have to measure some figures. There there, there, there should be some some traction, some audience, uh, and some uh, ability to 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 see if people people adopt and use and buy your product or your service, there should be some uh, monthly recurring revenues and things like that. But again, the most important factor is trust. And uh, even business angels, seasoned business angels like Marc Menasse, who created recently a startup studio site, I love outstanding teams and big markets. And so uh, again, uh, team is key, entrepreneurs, uh, and, is, uh, and there are reference calls made on the team and we analyze that and so it's a, it's highly data driven but there is always a leap of faith on the team so if we look at uh, some uh, some sayings uh, of this is an entrepreneurs you, you you will see that uh, trust is uh, is everywhere uh, and uh, so uh, uh, it's it, it's uh, also a question of fit of personal fit and not only analyzing a detailed excel file uh, as we'll see of course it has to be modeled but people do not uh, most people do not jump on an excel file they look they they ask you questions they see if you are uh, competitive uh, uh, if you uh, if you are current if there is an ambition they they, they make a lot of uh, assumptions on, uh, on the, the trustworthiness uh, of, of the team. And so we'll, we'll see the logics of business angels, of seasoned business angels, because they invest their own money, or of venture capitals, because they manage the money of limited partners, and they have to be very professional. But at the end of the day, uh, it's difficult to evacuate trust, as you will see. And uh, so uh, people check uh, if the, the, the person is, uh, is trustworthy, honest, and serious. Uh, that has, for instance, been stated by Pierre Cossus from Rizel, who created Price Minister, that was sold uh, 10 years afterwards to the Japanese group uh, Rakuten. And now he created then uh, his own uh, uh, venture capital uh, fund. And uh, so you, you, you see that uh, th th there is uh, an informal part uh, that, that is. Uh, uh, very important, and uh, so people uh, uh, look uh, if they identify some uh, some uh, some lies, uh, some uh, incoherencies, and uh, and if uh, if they feel they 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 may be betrayed, they stop uh, immediately the, the, the deal. And so I did a framework to analyze trust, and uh, simply speaking, trust is about uh, past uh, elements. Uh, future elements and uh, present elements of proximity. So I call that experience, guarantees, informal guarantees, and proximity. And this framework uh, may help us analyze uh, the space in which trust can uh, can develop uh, itself. And uh, uh, as you will see uh, in this picture, you may uh, you may see that uh, you may say that the, the guy on the right hand uh, is uh, seems to be trust uh, more trustworthy than the other one. One who seems to be a Latin lover uh, worse than me, but you you don't know. Perhaps he's a serial killer. Perhaps he's, he's not a trustworthy at, at all. And it depends uh, again on uh, what uh, you want to do with this person, because trust is not a universal thing. It's a, it's an assumption on the capacity and the intention of the person to do something, uh, and uh, and that's that's especially uh, precisely what uh, what trust uh, is. And so there are some 
some uh, triggers and, and some uh, items that may uh, destroy uh, trust, uh, like delay, omissions, lies. But we will also test or see if, if the person is consistent, is timely, is reactive, uh, has some sense of humor, of distance, uh, is discreet, uh, because confidence uh, is uh, etymologically related to uh, confiance, uh, to, to trust. And, and so it's, it's, it's a, a set of uh, a series of small items that may may uh, you take the risk of this leap of faith, which is uh, trust. And so getting back to, to, to startup companies, uh, it all starts with a business idea, uh, with a kind of ambition of utopia, and you will generally have a technical or a business background. And uh, with this idea, you will look uh, for uh, partners because uh, a startup uh, it's not only uh, about an idea and an excellent uh, strategy, it's also 90% of stubborn execution, uh, excellent execution in a lot of areas, in marketing, in sales, in uh, operations, in customer service, in IT, and you cannot do all that and you cannot master all that. That's why you have to find a partner or two or three partners. And we'll see in my course and in the other courses that the one-man show is, is, a, is a quite seldom uh, scheme, but it's also not a Mexican army with uh, more than uh, five or four co-founders. And so in uh, three-thirds of the cases, startups are created by two or three persons, which uh, raises the issue of finding one or two partners. It seems to be uh, simple, it's very difficult because that's where trust arises. And of course, it's not only finding a technical profile because I'm a, an HC alumni or a, a business profile because I'm an engineer. Uh, it's about finding a visionary uh, who will identify where is the beef, where is the business, a deal maker which will make, uh, which will create a growth machine which will help you strike the first deal, make some business de development, create a marketing machine. You will of course have to have an engineer, uh, of course a, a CTO that will structure all the production, the research and development, the, the product development which can be a long way and you will also have uh, to, to have what my wife who works in venture capital calls a back office Shiva, a person in charge of administration, of finance, of logistics, operations, and so forth. And you, you may be very good uh, or have, be a visionary, you cannot master all that. It's simply impossible and in, in terms of competence and in terms of time. That's why you have to partner and that's why you have to create, uh, to, to find associates, full-time associates, advisors, as we will see, we, in a strategic committee, in a scientific committee, we have some uh, companies that uh, uh, even created a higher uh, Nobel Prize holders in biotech companies, and that uh, that gives uh, a lot of credibility. And you, of course, have to attract employees, which will take the risk of working uh, in a startup company, uh, uh, because uh, even if it's more risky, because they uh, they, they, they are passionate about, uh, uh, about these uh, this issue, but they want to be paid. The founder, the co-founder, is a person who takes the risk of not being paid before the first fundraisings or the, 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 first, uh, the first cash flows. And so you have to find people who are crazy enough to dream with you and to make it come true. And that's where trust arises. And what, that's where you have to find people who are not clones. Uh, of course, it's, it's, it's uh, useless to, to create a company with clones, but with complementary people in terms of temper and in terms of competence. And that's where the, the trust issue is. So we'll, we'll see in my course uh, some, uh, some elements, some items about equity allocation. I even created an Excel file, uh, another Excel file. I will share a lot of Excel files with you in financial engineering, in, uh, in uh, forecasts, uh, business modeling, uh, project assessment. But you will see that uh, the, the standard scheme uh, is uh, to, to have uh, a team where the CEO gets a bit more because uh, it's uh, probably the, the, the worst or the more difficult job in the world, but uh, you have to find CTOs and other associates who should also be involved. The, the, the main um, 
the main part of the pie of the, the initial equity should go to the founders and you may attract uh, advisors, uh, members of a strategic advisory board that may also get some initial shares. And uh, of course, if you get initial shares of Facebook or Google, if this company uh, thrives, uh, you are simply rich. And uh, But uh, motivation is often not only money, as we will see, it's also uh, creating something which is bigger than the, the whole team. And this whole process is fueled by discussion and templates, and we'll, we'll see all that. But there are also uh, other conceptions uh, where sometimes the, the wish to do something, uh, to, uh, we, uh, to create something with somebody, which is not necessarily a friend, it can be a colleague, but precludes the project itself. And uh, uh, this morning I had a discussion with an uh, uh, MSIE candidate, uh, and we talked about uh, uh, finding the good profiles, and we, we talked about uh, the example of Big Mama, where uh, Victor Ruger uh, said, uh, uh, look for an associate first, and then look for the idea. And, he also said, do not create a startup on your own. It's too hard and it's not fun enough. So it's, it, it's again, it's about passion. And sometimes uh, you, 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 you will look for an idea with uh, a person you work with because, uh, because you, you want to, to, it's like a symbolic marriage. So there are other conceptions we can develop it where sometimes uh, the science guys are the, 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 the biggest shareholders. And there are even other conceptions where people say if the process is quite simple. You don't need associates. You can run many businesses with good mutants. So uh, we will we'll talk about all these conceptions, but the standard uh, scheme in, in the startup world, it's too, com uh, too complex. It's too risky. You have to run so fast and execute so good that you have to find one or two uh, persons uh, which are complementary in terms of competence uh, and uh, uh, trustworthiness, and that, that's, that's where trust arises. And then comes the issue of how can you find the ideal partner and create the best team. So uh, we created some, uh, th there are some events uh, called Find Your Co-Founder, where HEC is partnering with lots of engineering schools in order to help you to pitch your idea and find partners. Of course, an ecosystem uh, like uh, Station F, uh, Suzanne talked about it, it's, uh, it's the world's biggest startup ecosystem where uh, 1,000 startups are uh, incubated, uh, there are 3,000 persons, and of course, you can meet some other people, some projects may, uh, may be abandoned, and you may hire or find, not hire, as a, an employee, uh, a CTO, a business developer, and so there are lots, and that, that's why HSC's alumni uh, network is, is simply huge and interconnected with other networks. And so uh, there is no ideal solution, but you should boost the number of qualified interaction in order to find the best associate possible. So that's that's my advice, and uh, and uh, we are of course uh, linked to these startup ecosystems worldwide, uh, and uh, and that's how you can find uh, associates. And then the best thing, and that's what 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 we are doing in these uh, masters, is to work on a business plan and to see if the person is really complementary, uh, uh, is, is uh, having uh, sharing the same vision than you or building something that is bigger than you, and, is, uh, and, and uh, that's why uh, the, the business plan is, uh, is the best way to, 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 to see if, uh, if there is this personal fit and this will and this ability to deliver and to take this collective risk. So that's about the team. Uh, if we go back to trust uh, in the, the business uh, area at large, of course, uh, there is an interesting framework where you see that uh, you can analyze the need for trust uh, according to the risk of the transaction and the trust between partners. If the risk is, uh, is high, but the trust is strong, you may uh, write a relational contract and you may uh, nurture this, uh, this, this trust. If the risk is weak and uh, the trust is weak, it's simply uh, uh, it, it, it's simply a market. You are buying, uh, you are buying food uh, as, as far as you don't expect to be poisoned uh, by, uh, by the, the, the merchant. You, the, the, there is no need for trust. If the risk is high and uh, the trust is weak, uh, it's called hierarchy. You control, you take 
tend to control everything, but uh, it's not very motivating. And uh, again, if the, the risk is weak and the trust is strong, it's simply a, a rolling, a recurring contract. So we address uh, all that. And uh, of course, uh, the, the surge of IT and big data created a huge uh, area space for trust. And that's uh, that's all what the, the platform business is about. The, the C2C, this customer to customer platform, uh, you have, uh, you, you get feedbacks uh, among uh, the trustworthiness of, of people. And so you can, if you look at the, on, on booking, on TripAdvisor or BlaBlaCar, or, uh, and you, you can take an informed risk. You get some information. It's not an, an insurance, but you get enough information to, to, to see uh, if I can Take the same car with you, Suzanne. Uh, if I'm not a serial killer, or uh, I'm not being caught for the moment, and and so uh, it's it's giving a lot of information in order to to fuel uh, to fuel this uh, this trust. So it helps you to select the good risks, to frame the field of the trust, to optimize the transaction costs, and uh, it it can also be an alternative, as we will see in crowdfunding or an additional uh, funding. So we'll talk about. Uh, crowdfunding platform, uh, equity crowdfunding, crowd lending, which may be a way to promote yourself or, uh, or to find financial backers. Uh, so uh, all that is developed in my course. Um, uh, a last uh, item is I try to summarize all the strategies entrepreneurs use uh, in order to make their company more trustworthy. Of course, uh, you should partner with the best uh, people that are complementary in terms of tech, uh, uh, finance and business skills. Uh, you may attract uh, the best investors because that creates a, a positive uh, a chain effect. Uh, you may also, as we saw, uh, create uh, an advisory board with people that may uh, connect you uh, with, uh, with the, the, the key customers or with the key asset providers. Some companies use a scientific council. Uh, you, may, uh, you may also hire uh, some top tier experts and consultants because business is a small village in a given area. And if you work with the best people, uh, you, you, may, uh, you may reach the critical mass. The issue is at the beginning that you, you, you have to work with the best people and you don't have the money uh, to, to pay them and so you, you, you have to uh, incite them to do some uh, venture capital or intellectual uh, seed capital and that's what some consultants are doing and that, uh, that makes some people confident enough to invest in your company to take the risk again to lose everything because they expect to make a high gain. And there are also what I call some uh, the catalyst organizations which are structures that help you boost uh, your, your business, provide you some, uh, some, uh, some feedbacks, and that's all what incubators are, uh, or this Challenge Plus program that I uh, launched uh, 30 years ago, or these uh, online masters, which is a kind of incubation program because you are working on real projects, uh, of entrepreneurship project or uh, of startup uh, projects uh, with people uh, you probably not knew uh, before, and you have to, uh, to deliver all that and to, uh, to, to to address all the, these issues. And so uh, that's my conclusion. Uh, you see that uh, my, my, uh, uh, my goal uh, by uh, trying to, uh, to see if uh, trust uh, was, uh, was something important, I, I try to measure trust uh, to operationalize it, uh, to uh, uh, to, to see, uh, to, to measure risk, to measure the perceived benefits, but by measuring trust, uh, I probably destroyed uh, the, what is the essence of trust, which is a leap of faith. And uh, so, uh, but it, it, was a, it was an interesting journey because it helped me to, uh, to frame uh, the, the, the space in which uh, trust could prosper or uh, be destroyed. And uh, if you discuss uh, with uh, with uh, entrepreneurs or uh, all kinds of people, uh, it's, it's never neutral. And for 
for instance, uh, there is a friend who told me uh, during my PhD, oh, you're working on trust. Uh, I have a good friend who is a, a famous entrepreneur. Uh, he put his young child uh, on a, a closet and say, jump, uh, my son, uh, I will catch you. The son jumped and the, 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 the father did not catch the son. Don't do that with your kid, of course. And, uh, and this was a kind of lesson. And the, the, the guy said, you, you see, you should never trust uh, to anybody. That was uh, exactly the same philosophy that Leonardo da Vinci. Of course, I totally uh, disagree with that, but that's why trust and distrust can be a good barometer of our neuroses, and, but also a reflection of our free will. Because if everything can be calculated, uh, if uh, there is an algorithm provided by Google or Facebook uh, that, uh, that uh, says me, okay, Suzanne is 100% trustworthy uh, to uh, run this webinar i know that of course but uh, uh I, I think at the end of the day uh life is a risk and uh and that's what makes uh, the the uh, the interest of, of life and so you have uh, in the business world there are phenomena that are, are managed by carrot and stick so uh, price or uh, incentives and control but you never can completely evacuate trust because then you get some people which are not motivated and uh, which are not uh, efficient. And that's that's why periodically you have some research and some conferences like that about the role of trust and that uh, even in a, a multinational company, if, you, if the managers are not trustworthy, people uh, are not motivated and not productive at all. And so is it possible to finance without trust? I, I don't think so. You don't need to finance a friend, but you, 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 you make an assumption about the components and about the nature of the intentions. And this even reflects the cost of capital, the valuation of the company, and uh, at the end of the day, the motivation of, uh, of the person. And uh, so you, you see that at the end of the day, there is a strong correlation, and that was my findings in the PhD, between trust and the perception, the perception of benefits and of risks. Thank you very much. If you have some questions, no, or Suzanne, do you have so, to add something? Uh, yeah, well, yeah. Well, maybe you, we could answer a few of the questions yeah. that I have been asked during the web uh, during the webinar. Yeah. Uh, so, so what? So Shika is uh, asking, what's your take on trust with respect to the customers of the startups? A customer, uh, either in B2B or in B2C, uh, takes a huge risk at the beginning because uh, the product uh, is uh, a customer, an early adopter, and you will see that in uh, Frederick Isner's course, is the, the person who is ready to pay the most and the fastest, but it's really to be an early adopter, it's a leap of faith in the, in the quality, in the delivery, in timelessness, and that's why uh, startup companies have so much difficulties to, to, to be accepted by multinational companies with processes, with buyers, because they know that the company may be bust because uh, uh, the, the, the company, the startup, will miss its financial run. And so the, the trust is important uh, in, the, uh, in the entrepreneur and in the company at large. Uh, and uh, so uh, and that's why you have to show, to demonstrate your trustworthiness uh, with, by showing some uh, quick wins uh, about uh, about uh, product releases, about performances, about uh, people joining your uh, famous people joining your advisory board. So it's 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 absolutely essential. Okay, we have another question from Noriko, who is saying trust can be different by culture. Yeah. Different interpretations of trust can be a big issue for multinational teams. How do you approach the multinational issues? Of in the course, do you talk about it in the course? That's absolutely true, Noriko. Uh, and it's it's easy to trust oneself in a small community uh, where if, uh, for instance, if I'm not trustworthy, I'm out of business uh, in my village or in my community. But that does not apply uh, if there are other communities. And, and, and that's what 
where there are borders, uh, you, you should create some bonds of trust that overcome these, these borders. You should overcome the cultural differences, which may be a big hurdle. Uh, and, uh, and you should also, of course, explain precisely uh, how, how the relationship is, is framed. So that's called a contract. But uh, the thickest contract does not evacuate trust. I, I, uh, I sometimes signed shareholder agreements, which were 50 pages thick, uh, in uh, in 20 samples, so at the at the at the end you had a, a, a hand ache, uh, and and so it does not evacuate the necessity to create some bonds uh, in uh, multinational uh, teams, and that's that's what we you will do uh, in these uh, masses because uh, uh, people are participated. In, all over the, the the world, they have different backgrounds, and uh, and you have to overcome that and to uh, and to see that uh, that that creates the, the, the real wealth of, of of a team. And again, it's not finding clones uh, because I know that I'm trustworthy. I also know my defects, uh, but uh, and, and 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 that's uh, that's a big issue. So Noriko, you are perfectly true. Uh, it's it's an issue. And again, communication, uh, transparency is is a key and sometimes uh, even uh, some aspects like humor if people who are too serious uh, are just boring and uh, perhaps threatening and so it's a question of human qualities and but that's essential of course okay so we have another question from Kathleen uh, she is asking how many big companies started with a banking trust like Microsoft Facebook uh, Edison vs Tesla how can one defend themselves against the sea the deceptions like these well uh, <laughs> the, the the creation of uh, companies like microsoft or you see you also uh, um, the social network is uh, this movie so it uh, at the beginning it's it's a vision it's an illusion uh, and uh, it's an ambition and uh, and for instance, uh, because you, you talk about uh, Tesla, a guy uh, like uh, Elon Musk is, is an amazing guy. He, of course, he was, uh, he was successful with, uh, with PayPal, but uh, he's, uh, he's making people dream. And so people, they, there is a need in the world for ambitious projects. And that's what, what we'll see also in a startup project. If it's, uh, it's, if it's a small project, it won't interest uh, financial backers. So again, uh, I'm not uh, only for a venture capital model. It's up to you to invent the activity, the company you want to, to, to be in. But uh, so how can people bake uh, trust at the beginning. That's exactly what I showed before. Uh, they they gather a team, an ambitious team. They gather uh, advisors, consultants uh, that uh, that help them to design a compelling value proposition. We will see with Frédéric Islin that it's all about a value proposition addressing a real need, an unmet need, and creating a, a perceived value. And but to do that, uh, you 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 have, as you said, to bake trust uh, and to uh, uh, to, uh, of course, not to, to cheat, but to, to give the impression or the conviction that it is uh, the chronicle of an announced success, of a future success. And that's, uh, that's uh, where an entrepreneur has to be a true leader, has to be a true visionary, and has to, uh, has to, uh, to, to induce people to, to take informed risks, but to take risks. Okay, so we have now a question from Guillaume, yep. who says, in your 3D diagram, your list proximity as, you list proximity as one of the axes of proximity. What type of proximity do you refer to? Geographical, socioeconomic background? Thanks, Guillaume. That's exactly that. It's geographical proximity, but it's also psychological proximity. Uh, so you have some communities uh, where this proximity exists all over the world. Uh, some cultural co uh, community, but if you betray the trust, you are out of this community. So it's 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 not only proximity. So we'll see that some business angels invest in networks, in geographical networks, because they can monitor, they can can come to your company, uh, pay a visit. But uh, but it's not only linked to proximity; it's also psychological proximity. So, so it's both. And I really thank you to address that. I can send you my PhD. It's in French if you want. But uh, well. Well, another reader, uh, but uh, it, 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 it's both, exactly. 
Okay, we have a question from Arabian. Uh, customers are taking risks. I want to know the legitimacy of startup company. Basically, they want to know if the company is a scam or a company that will have a short lifespan, which will be costly to them. Yeah. Again, that's that's uh, that's exactly the, the leap of faith uh, people are doing because uh, a startup company uh, may uh, may disappear uh, within months, and uh, and people know that uh, noble professional people, VCs, uh, well, there is no definition of what is a startup. It's an innovative and a high growth potential company, but uh, people say uh, that about ninety percent of startups fail. Uh, 50% of normal uh, SMEs companies fail or don't uh, live uh, more than, uh, than five years. And so again, uh, yes, customers and investors are taking risks because if you begin using my, uh, my IT solution, my software, and uh, suddenly my company disappears, uh, you, you, you do not have anybody over the phone or over the, over the mail. And that's why the company has to show uh, that it, it's a strong company backed by investors, that it will be an everlasting company and that uh, a very uh, professional one. And so you have to demonstrate that with small signs, with multiple signs about your financial strength, about your customer base, among uh, your business uh, model, about your team, and that, that will lead people taking the risk. But again, the early adopters, the people who take this crazy risk to be your first customers, you should really uh, help them uh, and they will help you also to design the solution. You should really nurture them and uh, cherish them because they will give you uh, the, the, the credibility you need. Okay, well, Etienne, thank you so much for your presentation. I'm happy to be still alive and that you are not a serial killer. No, for the no, moment. no, no, for at the least, moment. So, at least I hope so. so. I think I can trust you really yes. after this presentation. And I hope it'll, it'll, uh, uh, our viewers will be wanting to know more and to join our master to, well, this time not see a sample course, but to see the full course of Etienne and, of course, being uh, coached and advised by him throughout the course and even after if you start an entrepreneurial project. Okay. That would be my pleasure. Thanks okay. a lot, Suzanne. Thank you. So now just, just a few words then about our uh, MSc, a few basics. So here are the different criteria for applying for a Master in Innovation and Entrepreneurship. You have to have five years minimum of professional experience hold a bachelor degree, of course be proficient in English since everything is in English like this webinar, and have an entrepreneurial or innovation spirit. It may be, you may be someone who wants to be more innovative in your own job or want to make your company more innovative. So one thing also you must be aware of this is a master's, HEC master's online, and there are 20 hours of work per week in average. So uh, a few, few uh, data about our MSIE, the tuition fees are 20,000 euros. You have the possibility to pay in several installments. So maybe you do not have the profile yet or you do not have the funds. Well, you have different options if you do not want to go jump straight to the MSIE. You can start with a certificate which covers the fundamental courses, the first part of our masters, and then later on progress with the MSIE or you can get a taste for free or for a very reasonable price for a few of our courses through MOOCs and specializations, and they are all available on the Coursera platform. So this is it. Well, thank you so much for your attention. And well, we have our next cohort, cohort five, that is starting in December. I saw in one of the questions someone asked, how many, how many students do you have per cohort? Well, it's around 100, we can say. So you still have time to start or complete your application to join our cohort and be part of our adventure. And well, the coming, uh, the, the courses will be starting on December 16. And as I told you previously, we'll be also having another cohort starting in June 2000. So, Etienne, in a few words, uh, what can you tell our viewers who are maybe, well, saying, okay, should I join the adventure of this Master in Innovation and Entrepreneurship? What would you tell them? Well, I would first uh, use the, the, the first motto of HEC, which I love, which, which is learn to dare, apprendre à oser. That, that's exactly, it's a question of uh, self-confidence and that's, we will we'll, uh, we'll provide you with uh, role models, uh, with, with tools, with inspiring entrepreneurs. And that, so the first thing is learn to dare. But the second thing is there is no a unique model. And so I wish you to find what the Japanese call your ikigai. So uh, to find what you are good at, 
what uh, so what you want to do, what you can do, what the world needs, and what you can be paid for. And so it's up to you to invent the kind of activity, the kind of venture or business you want to be in. And that's what all I, all I wish you to be happy. Simply. Thank you Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Etienne. Thank you for your passionate and wonderful presentation. Thank you, Andrea, our tech boy, who's here to assist you. And please feel free to uh, contact me, Suzanne, or Elizabeth. We are both the program advisors of our online master, and we hope to hear from you soon. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Bye-bye.